I'm Sarah Hart Weir. I'm the president of the National Down Syndrome Society. The National Down Syndrome Society, we are the leading human rights organization for all people with Down Syndrome. So what we really focus on are four areas of programming. We run our National Advocacy and Public Policy Center out of Washington, D.C. We run the National Buddy Walk Program where we have over 250 buddy walks across the country that raise about $14 million for the Down Syndrome community as a whole. We do a lot of public awareness and then community outreach. We provide the best information on Down syndrome in the world. You had a huge success two years ago with the passage of the ABLE Act. Can you tell us what the ABLE Act is and what its impact has been? The ABLE Act stands for the Achieving a Better Life Experience Act, best known as the ABLE Act. And what it does, it creates a tax-free savings account for all people with disabilities. You have the ability to put about $14,000 a year away into an ABLE account to save for expenses related to the disability. So things like housing, transportation, medical expenses that maybe your Medicaid or your private insurance doesn't cover, assistive technology and uh, clinical trials and other things that are related to the disability. Um, the biggest challenge for people with Down syndrome and other disabilities is that you can only have $2,000 at any given time in order to qualify for uh, entitlement programs like Medicaid and Social Security. So we worked on the ABLE Act for 10 years to create the ability for families to save for their children and for their adults with disabilities and their future. So only if you have a disability? Yes, if you have a disability, you qualify for the, for the ABLE account. And we've actually, since we passed it in 2014 in Washington, D.C., we had to pass state ABLE bills. So since January of 2015, we've passed 48 state ABLE laws. And as of yesterday, we have five uh, national programs for ABLE that are offering ABLE accounts to families. Congratulations. That's yes. great. So what about the role of NDSS in research? Can you tell us about that? Is there, do you play a role? Absolutely. So as the leading human rights organization for all people with Down syndrome, our focus on research is to improve the quality of life and allow individuals with Down syndrome to live long, healthy lives. So we really address the co-occurring conditions associated with Down syndrome, and that comes to finding a cure to treat Alzheimer's and Down syndrome, uh, sleep apnea, thyroid disease, heart defects. 50% of babies with Down syndrome are born with a heart defect and so we're really focused on finding treatments and therapies for those co-occurring conditions and so we're consistently advocating for legislation like the Cures Act or increased funding for NIH that really helps um, our researchers and scientists around the country um, study Down syndrome as a whole. Thank you and here's one final question about your experience here at BIO's Patient and Health Advocacy Summit. What are your biggest takeaways? I think the Bio Patient Advocacy Summit is a great opportunity to network with other patient organizations and find out what other priorities are happening across the different diseases and different conditions. You know, as an organization that fights for the human rights of other of all people with Down syndrome, you know, we're really focused on getting best practices from other organizations that have uh, lived this this before taking away what's happening in terms of research infrastructure around patient registries and biobanks and applying those to the Down syndrome community. Great. Well, thank you very much, Sarah. Thank you.